What's going on YouTube? This is Dan Leone, Plastic Model Building 101. Uh, in my previous uh, video, I talked about uh, the kit that I'm gonna be building, which is the Tamiya A6M3 Japanese Zero uh, and 148 scale. Uh, this is a very phenomenal kit. I, I built this kit, I built this kit in the past, and I gotta tell you, it's a really awesome kit. Um, even though to me has come out with the earlier versions like from you know, the A6 to, A6M2 and the A6M3, the HAMP which was the clip wing version, the, A, the A6M5 which was the Type 52 and also the A6M2 Type 21 with floats also known as ROOF. Uh, the earlier kits back in back in the 70s when, when to me it came out with those kits in the, uh, in the late uh, in the 60s and 70s um, you know, I mean, it was a phenomenal, the, the kits were, were still phenomenal kits. I mean, instruction wise, the instructions are just, are very straightforward. Uh, I, I just cannot say anything, um, I mean, bad about, you know, the kits. I mean, yes, I mean, older model kits, race panel lines, flash, uh, had to do some sanding, had to do some puttying and, and, and contouring and so forth and not only that, but if you, if you sanded over a panel line, you had to rescribe it. So, but, um, but before we, before we begin, uh, building this kit, I like to share with you some tools that I'm, I'm going to be using in building this particular model. Uh, I've picked some of these I picked up some of these tools at hobby shops like uh, like Hobby Lobby. Um, there is in here in Houston we have unfortunately we only have one uh, one hobby shop in Houston even though Houston's a big city but uh, um, fortunately I have to say that most of the most of the mom and pop hobby shops are are just about non-existent I mean uh, uh, now if you want to if you want to get a model kit uh, you would have to go to uh, you have to go online uh, eBay or um, there's also Hobby Link, Hobby Link Japan uh, you also have um, all kinds of uh, uh, online online uh, hobby shops like Sprue Brothers and so forth um, anyway but uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail about that, but uh, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's unfortunate to see all the mom and pop hobby shops dying off. We only have one model shop, G&G &G Hobby Shop. So if you're ever in Houston, Texas, look them up. Uh, I encourage you to go by and visit them. They're great people. They sell nothing but plastic model kits. And um, some of the hobby shops now, like Hobby Lobby and also uh, Michael's, uh, yes, they do have kits, but you know they really don't have the tools, or, or if they do have the tools, they're not really in good quality, and not only that, but the kits, uh, some of the kits are kind of a, a limited selection, unfortunately. But but anyway, without further ado, I'd like to share with you some certain tools and certain uh, paints and so forth that uh, I that I use. Um, I like to start off with this uh, blue tape. Uh, this is painter's tape. Um, you can get this at any any hardware store. Um, I myself, I work at Home Depot, and I gotta tell you, I mean, every time when I get a chance to, I buy this. Uh, they have this in different sizes. I mean, wide, really wide to a little skinny, you know. And this is a great. This is oh, this this is a this is a great uh, this is a great tool to have. Now, when you do take it and and you want to use it, you might want to. You might want to put it on, put some on your hand, and just kind of, you know, like so. You want to just take it, and uh, you want to take it, and we need to tear off a piece, especially when you have a when you have a painted surface. You you don't want to you don't want to you know peel off the tape on the on the surface, even though it's thoroughly dry. But so what I usually do, I, I just put this on my hand like like so, and I just you know. Now don't do it too much because it won't stick. But anyway, um, but anyway, when that's done and, and you just put it wherever you need to put it and and airbrush and go to town and, and it's great. 
um, great it's a great tool um, I also recommend uh, I also recommend silly putty um, for those of you who don't know what silly putty is it comes like in a, in a blue eggshell it's kind of like this right here um, you can get this tear it off and put it in your hand and just you know roll it like this and the heat from your hand kind of melts it and you just stick it to wherever you want to you know, like on the bottom of the fuselage you know to create the you know where that that feathered that feathered edge between the top and the bottom okay i mean they never really had straight edges you know i mean you know you know and of course sometimes you know when you do a straight edge sometimes the paint you know you get like like different types of steps like this you know and you know it just it doesn't look really good so so what i would like so what i usually do with the with the tamiya with the tamiya uh with any type of tamiya paint or any type of paint uh when i'm masking especially the bottom part i use uh, i like to either use the blue masking tape or i use this so either way this is this is some good stuff um as far as paints um i use tamiya um this is a good it's alcohol base and also you have a thinner that's uh it's straight you can also use straight uh denatured alcohol like you know isopropyl alcohol because that's all what it is and um and what's so unique about this that especially when you're when you're airbrushing um i want to show you just real quick if i can open it i want to just show you it's really cool but as you can see if you can if you can see like this little lip about mid about mid part like right here where my finger's pointing uh you you know that's where you can put like your thinner to thin the paint and shake it up real good and filter it now as far as and as far as filtering out I'll, I'll get to that here in a minute um let me close this up real quick um filters i use these paint filters right here these are really good to have um just be very careful when you're pouring the paint i mean i, I know you got you got these parts right here but but uh you know like like if you have like empty paint jars and so forth um if you have empty paint jars you know um what i what i usually do is i sometimes i would just cut the part right here i just cut that and i just use it as a little filter and pour the paint in to filter the paint so so after you get done thinning it the way you the way you like to thin it so um you can get these at any hardware store home depot lowe's or personally i work at home depot so get these at home depot anyway so um anyway um now as far as tools I like to show you some different types of tools that I use, and especially when I'm spreading putty, uh, especially like like large areas. This is a really good, as you can see, I've been using this before. But um, I get I get the uh, putty, and I, I just put a dab a dab on this, and I just smear it on, or like on a wing root, or 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 uh, any or engine to cell or something like that, and I just try to, you know smooth it down and contour it and so forth and then once once the putty dries i then after that i sand it so um also like in your tight spots like in your like around your wing like in your wing roots and so forth you know just a little bit you know if you just don't need a whole lot but you know just to need a little bit and also the, the same thing right here too i mean this is i mean so so these these types of uh these these types of tools are really really ideal to have and and you can get these uh i i got these through squadron squadrons are really good uh a really good uh mail order uh like for for paints and also they're starting to sell kits too so so i like you know i like squadron and so forth too can't go wrong with squadron um i do have paint brushes um i got these through um you can go to any art store um art rama or art store and or um you know and like i said or hobby lobby or or um maybe even home depot you know i'm sure home depot sells some of these too um only thing is you know i mean paintbrush and a model for those of us who have paintbrush models uh in the past i mean you know as you know you, you get 
paint streaks and you know you you know you got to go over it and over it and over it till you get that consistency and not like that but you got to go in the same direction because if you're not then it's just not going to look good so so um also you also want to keep your your paint brushes clean and flexible and once you once you're done with them um always want to you know you know clean them with a with a good with a good brush cleaner and and then rinse them off and let them and let them air dry so okay um getting back to uh paints i like to talk to you about about, about different paints i'll be using um i will be using tamiya paints um tamiya paints you can't go wrong with me they're, they're great paints i mean accurate military color paints for for different types of airplanes i mean they make everything like for for figures tanks ships planes and so forth uh, what's really unique about this is that you know you have you can use your natured alcohol to thin it um, so this is a really good paint really good paint especially for airbrushing of course you have to you know filter that's the only down the downside um, then you have um, you know um, you have your spray paint i mean um i mean of course uh, this is a red brown like say like you know if i'm going to do a japanese zero of an a6m5 the propellers were reddish brown um this is uh, an ideal i mean what i would do i just i just get the propeller itself instead of just airbrushing it all the time and just you know you know doing all that i just i put it in my i put it in my spray booth and turn it on and just just do just 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 one just one one pass one pass let it dry another pass one dry and you know let it dry and until i get where i where i where i want it so i mean this is a this is a you know i mean to me it paints a, it's really good uh i've tried i've tried like testers and i've tried yeah i've tried testers and i gotta tell you they come out real real goopy and I just, um, I just didn't really care too much for uh, testers too much. So now um, another paint I like to talk to you about is um, also they've just now started coming out with aircraft colors. Um, you can get this at hobby shops, and you can also get this through Squadron. Um, um, and and so what's really unique about this? This you can use this in your airbrush. It's ready to go. All you got to do is put it in your airbrush and go to town now some people do kind of thin it again they kind of do a little bit more thinning but man if if uh if man uh it's all ready to go all you got to do is just shake it up real good and just just do it just shake it up real good some of them some of them have little balls inside that kind of mix up the paint and everything and you know and, and it goes on and it, and it just and it, it goes on great um they also have like a um this is another one model air um this is for like your um uh, german colors german luftwaffe colors or german armor or so forth or, or if you're doing military vehicles and so forth this is a, this is a great paint too and as you can hear that it's it too i mean it's it's ready to go um here's another here's another brand Hataka from Japan. Um, you get this through Squadron. Get this through online or you know eBay or so forth. Um, Sprue Brothers also carries this this as well too. And uh, it's it this is a, a great uh, this is a good one as well too. It's very consistent and you know all you got to do is shake it. But the thing is you got to be very. I mean some of them are pretty thick, so you might want to take it and, and uh, you know you want and take off the the, the the, the spout and just kind of mix it up and, uh, and and once you put it in your airbrush you might want to put a couple of drops of, uh, of acrylic thinner now what I use to clean my airbrush I use acrylic because I use acrylic paints I gotten away from enamel um, uh, you know enamel it gets too tacky it gets too it's just a mess to clean up so uh, I use acrylic thinner um, this is great great to use i also use uh, uh, what you call uh mineral water um which is you know you can get that at any you know dollar store and so forth so this is this is a great a, a great stuff to use so 
Um, I also have here um, some other airbrush cleaner. Um, this is uh, Vallejo, and uh, this is you can get this at any you know through Squadron, uh, eBay, or Amazon. And uh, I mean, this is also a good airbrush cleaner as well too. I mean, it's 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 uh, I, I just cannot. Um, I just don't have any bad things to say about this is because I've used this and this is a very, very, uh, a very, uh, very good cleaner. So um, now uh, also Vallejo also they have they also built, you know, for for like for German Luftwaffe, especially like uh, German aircraft and, and desert the desert campaign like in uh um you know for the desert campaigns um this is the different types of paints um they have a different assortments of paints in the uh in in this box you can get this at like i said you can get this on amazon you can get this at uh, uh ebay uh screw brothers uh, uh or or if you have if you still have a mama pop poppy shop if they don't have it i'm sure they can special order it for you so um so that is um that the as far as uh paints is is concerned now <clears throat> sometimes before before I, I paint, I always want to spray my model for with uh, surface primer because what this does, it kind of, it kind of tells you if there's any blemishes or anything that needs to be sanded or something needs to be puttied or whatever. You can come back and sand it and putty it where it needs to be puttied and sprayed again. If it looks good, great. And then after that, once you're done with that, you can you can go ahead and, and start painting your model with you with the paints that you desire. So. Okay, now I also want to talk about different types of glues. Now, as you know, when we were growing up, as far as glues, it came in a tube, red testers tube. And, you know, and the thing about it is, you know, it would just get all over the place. I mean, you get all over your fingers and all of it, just everywhere. It, it messed up canopies, it just messed everything. I mean, it was just messy. Of course, you know, back in our, you know, back when we were growing up, for those of you, you know, when you build a model man, you wanted to, you got home, you sat down, you built it, you painted it, and next thing you know, you're flying around the room. And they, I mean, even if the paint's not even dry, and of course, you know, and sure enough, you know, you, you know, get blown up with firecrackers or, or you have a sibling that comes into your room or whatever and, and destroys it. Trust me, I've had one. So <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but okay but they have improved uh glues like i'll show you this this liquid cement uh this is really good it's got the it's got the applicator metal applicator and this is really good especially you know like like when you go into the sprockets where the where the where the aligning pins are and all that and just and just put that you know put it where the aligning pins are and you know it's used very you, know, you can use that very sp sparingly and then of course when you want to reinforce the part i also get this extra thin extra thin uh glue which i gotta tell you it's very phenomenal um but i want to just tell you um i mean when you're using glues uh from a safety standpoint always use it in a well ventilated area and not only that but keep it out of reach of small uh, the little ones because you know so i just want to throw that out um but and that includes paints and thinners and so forth and tools and so forth so anyway but um but this i mean you can you can put like you can put the piece together and just use this to go along the seam to join and and it's really and it's and it's unbelievable because it, all it does, it goes down the seams and the next thing you know, it's stuck together and man, I mean, and I mean, no mess. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's a very, very phenomenal, a very phenomenal, uh, this is a very phenomenal glue by Tamiya. Now they also have a different type, they have different types of glues as well, but uh, the extra thin cement, you can't go wrong with it. So now. 
Um, I also want to talk about, um, if I have, oh, here it is. Uh, I want to talk about like for your canopies. Now, sometimes, well, most of the time when you're using testers glue or even glue like this sometimes, uh, you know, the thing about it is it can fog up your canopy. It can, it can craze it. Well, you don't want that. So what you want to do is, um, uh, and not only that, but you don't you don't want to get any any like a fingerprint or whatever on your canopy because if that happens, man, it just ruins your day. So what I usually use is this right here. This is called Formula 560, and which or you can also use Elmer's glue. Um, it's equivalent to Elmer's glue. And and the thing is, what this does when you apply it and you put the canopy. The glass or anything like you know, if you you know for your airliners or a bomber or you know and so forth um, if if you get it on there don't panic because guess what it dries clear and and I tell you what I mean you wouldn't even know you made a mess so so let's say you do put you know put some on there and you do get you mess up you put some on here and, and it you know and something happens don't panic just let it dry clear so anyway, this is this is a really really good uh, adhesive as far as for uh, for clear parts. So I want to just talk to you, you know I'll tell you about that. Um, I also have here um, Mark Fit. This is a decal solution, or for all you Europeans, decals. Uh, this is really good to use, especially when you are applying your decals. Um, um, you want you know you put this on here and you know before you put the decal on you put this on before where the decal is going to be put it on put on and then you put the decal on and then you brush this on top of the decal and and what it does is it shrinks and, and conforms to the surface it looks like the decal is painted on it's I mean I've used this and I gotta tell you it works it's great this is a great 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 kit so I mean great, great. this is this is really great stuff I also have some Microsol this is a Microsol set um, this is really good this is a setting solution for decals so if, if you don't have this this is really good and they also have a decal remover too so so let's say man you get a decal you don't like it and you want to do away with it whatever and, and they have a decal remover you just spray it on you know Put it on there, and and, and, it, and it comes right off. I mean, no muss, no fuss. It's it's great. So that um, also have here a uh, panel line accent color. This is really good, especially if you want to do panel lines. You have that grime, and you know want the airplane, especially for like in your cockpits. You don't want the airplane look too new. I mean, especially if you want to look make the airplane look or the tank or whatever you're building you want to make it look like it's beat up and been around and and you know because you know especially german uh german aircraft and japanese aircraft uh and italian aircraft or should i just say just axis aircraft for you politically correct types um um uh you know practically maintenance done was practically very primitive and practically non-existent. I mean, they just flew them into the dang to the, they couldn't fly it anymore. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at, this is some panel line wash, and I gotta tell you, this is great. Uh, this is great to use, especially where the aileron for me as a as a airplane builder, um, where where the control surfaces are. Uh, put that around there, and it looks it looks phenomenal. So um, that so. Anyway, uh, I don't know if I've missed anything. Oh, I know. Now you want to have a good bonding of your. You want to have a good bonding of your of your parts, um, like the wings or the fuselage, whatever. Um, these you can use these. These are clothespins. You can get this at any dollar store, and believe me, they work. They make great, great clamps. Great clamps. These are really good. I mean, they don't. They don't put a lot of pressure or anything. I mean, it's just, and they're made of wood, and they're, and they're very inexpensive, very inexpensive. So, um, also I have, um, also have a um, airbrush cleaning station. Um, the filter's right here. You just put your airbrush in here, put the cleaner in there, and just you know, spray and spray and spray, and then put and put some more 
a brush cleaner in there to, to clean out your airbrush and once that's done um, for those of you who have uh, um, Iwata or a, an airbrush that is just uh, you know you got to take it apart and everything to clean it um, you know but this is this is an ideal thing to have or if the uh, I I myself use an airbrush that all you got to do is just take the tip take the tip off and but you know uh, but still sometimes they still get clogged and so forth. So, um, you know, but I usually use I usually use that it's 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 a great it's it's uh, This is a great little little device to have and not like that, but you don't have to worry about any um, You don't have to worry about any type of uh, You know odors and so forth because you got that filter on top of you and then once it's done You just you know pour it in a, in a proper receptacle just don't let the don't let the the hippie patrol uh, hippie patrol get a hold of you. So anyway, um, now I also want to put uh, super glue. Um, super glue is great, especially when you know, especially if you have like a small gap, or they, they, they you also have a, a glue called Zappa Gap. Um, you know, it, it, it provides a good filler. But I just got, I got to warn you though, be very careful when you're, when you're putting this on here. Cause if you get it on your fingers, it's all, I mean, it's like super glue and, uh, um, man, if your fingers are stuck together and you can't get them off, I mean, uh, the last thing you need to do is go, go to the ER and get, and get your fingers free. But if you do, if you, if you do get stuff, you know, on your fingers, whatever, um, don't try to, you know, use your knife to cut it off, whatever. Over time, it will start peeling off I mean, because the oils and everything from your from your hands and so forth. It will it will start you know start to you know scale and peel off and so forth. And next thing you know, you don't you know you don't do that. So, but uh, but if you do this, be very careful. The way I would apply it, I just put some on a on a small like on a small paper plate or whatever. Um, and uh and i use toothpicks and i just whatever it need you know wherever it needs i just use a toothpick and so and that's that's the most most safest effective way to do that so so that being said so so now you know about different types of glues uh, i also have here um this is model master acrylic cleaner uh, i've mentioned before um i have also have to me a thinner uh, which is like I said, it's out, it's alcohol. I mean, basically what it is, it's alcohol. Um, you can put that in your spray bottle, and and let's say like you know if you wanna if you you know when you clean your parts before you start your assembly or anything like that, you wanna you wanna you know you know you can use that or um, man I don't have it with me, but um, if you want a good mild detergent to clean all your parts, I highly recommend. Uh, if you looked in, in my in some of my videos, I have what they call Dawn. It's blue. You can get that at any hardware store, um, Home Depot, and uh, or you can get it at any supermarket, dollar store. Um, it's it's a phenomenal. I mean, what it does, it, it takes the the oils because you know most most parts and pieces when they come when they come off of the uh, when they come off the uh, uh, what you call the uh, the uh, manufacturing process, the machines they they are they are out of the molds. I'm trying to say the molds uh, before the before they put the plastic you know they inject the plastic in they spray the molds with a release agent and that's an oil based product and then once once the uh, once the plastic is injected in there and it's cool. It's cooled off and everything. It's you know then they they take it out of the out of the out of the molds. And so um, I never been to I never been to a plastic plastic model factory. Uh, I'd love to go do that, especially in uh, Suzuka, Japan, or or here in the United States, or or um, or in Europe, like uh, Ravel, Germany. I mean they you know Ravel, Germany's come a long way too. So. Anyway, but uh, that's all I have for right now. So this is Dan Leone, Plastic Model Building 101. Have a good day, a good night, good, good modeling, good flying, or whatever makes you happy. Peace out.